Doggone, I can't breathe with this dead gun oh, mask on. <sighs> John, is this a suggestion or good? Because I've got <laughs> I've got my own stuff, you know? All right. <clears throat> good morning to everybody. Glad to see you here. Glad to see your smiling faces. Mercy. It almost takes me away here, you know. Uh, mm. Well, welcome to the uh, Sunday morning worship at uh, Pinnacle Church of Christ. We're glad to have you here, and I'm glad you've chosen to make time in your busy schedule this week to join us. We're getting a few more folks each week, and we're glad to see you here. Uh, we're grateful for our visitors as well. I've been privy to uh, a list of our visitors that have been attending for several weeks, and I wanted to say just a special thank you to our visitors and uh, grateful for you making time in your busy week to be with us. And also a hearty hello to everybody out there at, in uh, our live stream that's watching via Facebook. Uh, glad you're able to tune in and uh, when you're able to join us again, we'll be, we'll be right here waiting with open arms to greet you back. So uh, at your convenience, at your speed. Also, I want to, speaking of Facebook, I want to make uh, everybody, I know, I know this is kind of redundant, but I want to remind you that we have also a, a Wednesday evening devotional at 6 o'clock. We have a Thursday morning Bible study at 10.30. And we have a new addition. Our brother Jackson House is hosting a Zoom video session at 7 o'clock uh, p.m. Hope you'll join that. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you get to see folks, actually see folks and talk and <clears throat> share all the pinnacle gossip. Oh, okay, sorry. <clears throat> sorry, no, not, not that. Okay. All right. In all seriousness here, we have... Uh, I hope you've had a chance to look at the newly published prayer list this morning. Uh, you'll see that about twice a week. Um, but there are several of our Pinnacle family that have been recently added, and I pray that you'll go to our Facebook page and that you'll uh, spend a bit of time and reflect on those needs, uh, folks that have lost family members, and be very prayerful about those folks this week. Uh, that's not it. We've got so much going on around us, you can't sit in front of a TV set more than five minutes before you're inundated with uh, things that are just overwhelming to us. Uh, I just pray that you'll be mindful this week of our firefighters. Uh, we have a team going from Arkansas to California. Uh, I've known probably some of those people in my past walk with state government. Uh, I think the Forestry Commission sending a team, uh, part of a team there. Uh, there's hurricane victims that are still, uh, you know, what can you say? Their homes are gone, their families have been broken up, loss of life, it's incredible. Whew. Give me a minute here. Uh, there's families that are still struggling mightily with COVID-19, lost family members. Uh, that are sequestered, can't see family members, be mindful of those folks this week. We're Christians. Prayer should be native to us, and I just pray that you will be mindful of these folks that we're talking about today. Today, our brother John Phillips will be bringing us a lesson today on what hasn't changed. Hallelujah. You know, <laughs> wow. Man, <clears throat> but before that, I want to read a, a brief scripture that's a favorite to mine, and then we'll open up with a prayer and then turn it over to Randy here. You'll know this scripture, <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 4, 7, beginning. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. 
We are pressed on every side by troubles. We are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We are knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. Will you pray with me, please? Our grateful Father in heaven, you're incredibly merciful to how fragile we really are day by day as you give us life. We're grateful for this beautiful day you've given to us, this fall weather. And I just pray, Father, you'll bless our worship time today, bless our communion time today, our song service today, bless John and his lesson. We're grateful for the visitors that have chosen to be with us today. Those that are unable to be with us, Father, please bless those with health concerns, surgeries, people that have lost loved ones, Father. Our hope as Christians that we will emerge from all of this difficult and uncertain days closer to you, Lord, to our family, to our friends, and our community. We thank you and just ask again for your blessing in our service. In Jesus' name, amen. Good Sunday morning to everyone. How are y'all doing? It's so good to see more and more faces coming back to be with us and we're about to sing some praises to our Father in Heaven. Hope you'll do that. We're going to stand together for this first song. I'm higher ground. Brother Gary Smith will lead our communion today, and Brother A.J. Gilbert will have our closing prayer. But Higher ground is our first song, and Savior like a shepherd lead us will be our second song. Let's sing together. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay, though some may dwell where these abound. My prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost high and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher plain than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Be seated, please. <clears throat> Savior, like a shepherd, lead us much. We need thy tenderest care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us, for our use thy foes prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us Thine, we are. We are Thine, do Thou befriend us, Be the guardian of our way. Keep Thy flock from sin, defend us, Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when 
we pray. Early let us see thy favor, early let us do thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our bosoms fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us still. Brother Gary Smith. In 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, Paul wrote, When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. I assume in that way all of us are like the Apostle Paul. I assume you're just like me. I don't think anything like I did when I was younger. I don't behave like I did. I, I changed a whole lot. In fact, it was so obvious to me, it called my attention about this time last year, first real cold streak we had. Walked out my back door on the patio. There was a little lizard about three inches long. And the poor little thing was so cold, it could not move. And I did something I would never have done when I was younger. I felt sorry for a lizard. <laughs> and, and so I, I picked it up and, and picked up a piece of tile and and put it out there on the sun so it would warm up. And I even went and checked on it two or three times to see it was okay. God's not like us. God is the same today as he was in the past, and he'll be the same in the future. And just as we're told that, that God loves us because we are created in his image, and Perhaps some best-known verse in the Bible is in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that through him we should not perish. The Apostle John wrote in 1 John 4, 16. And so we know, and we rely on the love that God has for us, for God is love. God loves us. Jesus loved us and paid the ultimate sacrifice due to that. And this time every week, we follow the example of the church in the New Testament to have what we call the Lord's Supper or communion, something that the, Jesus Christ told us to do. He said, take this bread and, and it represents my body and eat of it. And we are to remember his sacrifice, and his resurrection. Would you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful to you for your love for us, for all the blessings we have through you and through your Son. And Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus made as a, as a reconciliation offering so that we can be united with God our Father. As we take this loaf, may we all focus on his body that he gave for us. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Father, as we take this cup, let we contemplate and remember of the blood and blood that Jesus shed for us, that the covenant we have with God is through you and through your blood sacrifice. As we drink this cup, may we think of you and what you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
At this time, separate and apart from the Lord's service, we we have an opportunity to to give of our financial means to support the body of Christ. You know, I think of that different as I did as a child also. I remember when I was little, my dad would give me a quarter, and when the collection plate came in, I put a quarter in. I remember getting my first job. I was 12, carrying brick and mortar with my dad. And so I took a dollar of my paycheck, and I'd drop in that communion because I thought I had to. That's what I thought as a child. Later on, I didn't think that way. I thought I get to. It's a privilege to take of our income and, and give some of it to the Lord's church. Today we have a we do everything different because this old virus, we're getting tired of it. <laughs> some of you there's a pop a box out in the back that you can uh, drop a contribution in. A lot of you do it online. Uh, whatever you choose, that's great. Would you bow with me? Father, we're so thankful to you for the blessings you give us, for the jobs we have, the, the ways that you give us that we can take care of our families. And Father, it's a privilege to be able to take some of that and give it to the church to support your holy body. Bless us. Bless us in our lives. Bless us as we go through this week. Bless our contributions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be turning in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 13. We will get there in just a, a moment. But um, let me just take a moment to say how much I appreciate uh, those of you who have been praying uh, for me. I've had a, just a real ordeal over the past several weeks with um, my hip. And uh, if you notice today, I am uh, without cane. Did you notice that? And I am so thankful uh, to be able to walk without the impediment of that uh, stick. But I appreciate you for your prayers and your thoughts and well wishes, and it has made a tremendous difference, and uh, we're thankful for that. Would solicit your prayers also for our uh, brother Chuck and Susan. Uh, they are taking some well-deserved uh, R&R &R, uh, out in the Yellowstone Mountains. I, I can just imagine that Chuck by now is probably taking his text and preaching to the bears out there. Um, 2020 has been um, a year of change, hadn't it? Uh, several of us have just been inundated with the, the, the changes, and it seems like every time we turn around, something new is, is, is happening, something different is being done. Uh, it makes us think that everything has changed. It makes us ask, what hasn't changed? Uh, it's a lot of things to get used to. I mean, um, working is different now, isn't it? Uh, there was a time when I wished that I could work from home. I thought that was a thing to do. And now my wife and I, we uh, converted our dining room into our, our office, and she's on one end of the table, and I'm on the other end of the table. Let me tell you, at working from home, it's not what it's cracked up to be. It's some hard work. Uh, some of you are like me and wishing that we can all get back to work so we can get some rest. Things have changed. School has changed for a, a long time. The kids would wish that they could get out of school. I know when I was younger, I couldn't wait for the summer break, couldn't wait to be out of school for the holidays. Now kids are wishing that they could get back to school, and their parents are hoping and wishing that they can get back to school, and we're all praying that it will be safe for them as they go back to school, for them and for our educators as well. Sports have changed. Now that we finally got sports back, I watched the football game yesterday, and it was just kind of surreal looking at a mostly empty stadium except for the cardboard cutouts that they put in the bleachers and uh, watched a basketball game, and they actually have little cartoon figures in the stands, and they have to pump in the crowd noise. It's, it's just different. Even church is different. It used to be a time when we would come together, some 300 strong, and we would shake each other's hands, and we would hug one another and 
get coffee and eat donuts and talk about what are we going to have for potluck. Those days have changed. We're slowly making our way back and with an abundance of caution coming together once again to praise our great God. Coming together in different ways. Some are coming together on the parking lot. Others of you are sitting in your pajamas in the living room watching us via live stream. Yes, we can see you in your pajamas. <laughs> Things have changed. And the thing about it is, is that as human beings, we don't like change very much, do we? Somebody said the only thing that is constant in this life is change. Mark Twain, I think, had it best. He said the only person that likes change is a wet baby. But change is all around us. Sunday is going to change into Monday if the Lord wills. Summer is going to change into fall as the temperatures are falling and we see the leaves changing. The caterpillar changes into a butterfly. We like those changes. Pigs change into bacon <laughs> or sausage or barbecue ribs. Wait a minute, I'm starting to get you hungry now. So. Things change, brothers and sisters, and that's nothing new. There's always been change. Back in the first century, the Hebrew writer was writing to the people of his day to let them know not to be too excited about the changes that were going on during that day and during that age. He writes to them in that verse out of Hebrews chapter 13, beginning with verse number one. He says, let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Remember the prisoners, as if chained with them those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Marriage is honorable among all. And the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. Remember those who have rule over you, who have spoken unto you, the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. And then he says in verse 8 these words, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I wonder why he wrote those things to the people of the first century. Apparently, they were having problems with uh, treating one another right uh, because he says to them, let brotherly love continue. Maybe they weren't loving each other as they should. Maybe they weren't treating one another with equity and fairness. Maybe they were not kind-hearted and loving as they should be. Aren't you glad we've changed? Aren't you glad we've gotten better since then? He wrote to them to say, hey, be careful how you treat people. Don't forget to entertain strangers. Maybe there was a problem with them treating uh, people who were different from them, the aliens and pilgrims. Maybe they had forgotten that at one point they were aliens and pilgrims, strangers in the land of promise. Aren't you glad that we don't have a problem with that today? He wrote to them, marriage is an honorable institution to be held in high esteem. Apparently there was a problem back then with uh, people not honoring the institution of marriage that God himself has ordained. One man, one woman, for one lifetime. Aren't you glad we don't struggle with that today? We've changed, haven't we? He wrote to them to change your conversation don't be so quick to misunderstand people. Don't be so quick to be uh, dissentful. Let your conversation be without covetousness. If somebody doesn't agree with you, don't sock them in the mouth. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. Aren't you glad we've changed today? And he concludes to them by saying this, for all of the changes that they were going through in the first century, for all of the difficulties that they were having, his admonition to them is the same admonition that we should take today. The Hebrew writer said, 
Keep your mind stayed on Jesus, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes, and you know me. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to preach for a long time. What hasn't changed? As this world around us seems to be spinning out of control, and, and we're trying to grapple with and, and wrestle with all of the changes that are coming down the pipe, it seems like every day something new has happened, something different that we've got to deal with. Some other problem has popped up. What hasn't changed? telling you what hadn't changed, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. What hadn't changed? Well, first of all, I want you to know God hasn't changed. Amen? Wish uh, we could put some kind of little superimposed breaking news under that uh, live stream today so that people would do like it does on the news. Breaking news, God hasn't changed. See, when we talk about God, we have to start by talking about the character of God. God's character has not changed. Now listen, we live in an unrighteous world, but God is righteous, and he does not change. We are unrighteous human beings doing the, the very best that we can to live as righteously as we can, but God is a righteous God. The Bible says, over in Romans chapter 3, in the verse there is 10. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. We kind of get a little haughty at that and huffy. And, well, what are you trying to say, that I'm not righteous? No, we, we, we tend to judge our righteousness on a sliding scale of what seems good for us at the time. We're, we're quick to say, I'm okay, you're okay. Don't say anything bad about me. I won't say anything bad about you. You've heard that saying before. There's a little bit of good in the worst of us. There's a little bit of bad in the best of us. But my friends, God does not play the change game. God is a righteous God. He does not change with the shifting sands of time. He does not conform to our changing values and morals and folk ways that we do. God is still a righteous God, and God does not change. We talk about God. We have to understand the, the character of our great God, and God is a just God. We live in a world of injustice, but God has not changed. He still sits high and, and, and looks low. He still holds the world in the hollow of his hands in these difficult times of social injustice and unrest and upheaval that we live in. We need to remind people that justice delayed is not justice denied. God is still a just God. The Bible says in Acts chapter 17 and the verse there is 31, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, and that man is the Lord Jesus himself. God's character is just, and one day he will judge the world in righteousness. The Hebrew writer said in Hebrews chapter 9 and the verse there is 27, and it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment, God has not changed. Paul proclaimed over there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in the verse there is 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that we may receive the things done in this body according to what he has done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. God is still a just God because God does not change. What hasn't changed? God hasn't changed. When you talk about the character of God, not only is he a righteous God, not only is he a just God, but you've got to understand God's purpose. God's purpose has not changed. From the beginning of time, he had a purpose in all that he did, in all of creation, in all of the design. He had a purpose for us in creating us and breathing into our nostrils the very breath of life. 
and man became a living soul. Now by sin, our soul was separated from God, but, but, but God had a plan to reunite the created and the creator. God's purpose has not changed. James says, James chapter 1, verse 17, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of heavenly lights who does not change like the shifting shadows. Truth is, there's not a thing in this world that can happen without God allowing it to happen. Say amen if you can. Not a thing in this world. We get all upset about the changes and the things that are occurring, and it seems to just upset our apple cart, but it doesn't take God by surprise. Not a single thing in this world occurs with God, God allowing it to happen. Now, now be careful. Somebody's going to go out of here and say, Brother Phillips, you're saying that God caused all of this to happen? No, there's a difference between the direct will of God and the permissive will of God. God doesn't always make things happen, but God allows things to happen in this world, but nothing takes God by surprise. And God's purpose is always working toward our ultimate good. You remember there in Romans chapter 8, in the verse there is 28, Paul writes, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God to them who have been called according to his purpose. Now, the question that we must ask ourselves is, well, what is the purpose of God? What is God's purpose? The Bible tells us clearly that God's purpose is to give us every good and perfect gift. God's purpose is to be long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God's purpose is that he would have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy chapter 2, and the verse there is, is 4. Oh, my friends, in this ever-changing world in which we live in today, Certain things have changed. We can see them so clearly. But I want you to know this morning that there are things that have not changed. God's purpose has not changed because God does not change. What hasn't changed? Well, God's church hadn't changed. I didn't get very many amens that time. Some of you are wondering, well, I see some things that I never thought I'd see in my day. Well, that's true. As our world changes all around us with, with the, the COVID-19 and the social unrest and the political uh, agitation that's going on, the change that is in the air these days, let me tell you, I understand that we are very much confronted with the idea that everything is changing, changing for the worse, perhaps. But let me tell you something. What hasn't changed is the church of our living God. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against that. Matthew 16 in the verse there is 18. The church hasn't changed. Now, now that doesn't mean that people haven't changed. That doesn't mean that um, a lot of the methodologies haven't changed. Listen, we've gone through in the past half century, in the past 50, 60 years, many changes have come into uh, Christendom, the ecumenical church, religious circles. We've been trying to try to find why, why uh, the church seems to be on the decline in Western world. Well, we can look to Europe, and we can look to Eastern nations and see why the church has been on the decline somewhat. And that has caused those in religious circles to, to get busy trying to change the paradigm. A paradigm shift is going on in religious and ecumenical circles. It's been going on for years. First, there, there was the research paradigm. You remember, we used to get all these church growth studies, Harding University and Abilene Christian and had departments and chairs of departments who were busy doing church growth studies, trying to figure out what's going on, what are the latest trends, what should we be doing now? Should be preaching the gospel. The same truth that we've preached all along. 
That hasn't changed. But we change. We've gone through the business paradigm shift. Well, we just need to run church like a business. We just need to do things in a systematic way. We just need to get things done properly, decently, and in order. Well, that's fine and good, but the church is not a business. The church of the living God is a living, breathing organism. The church is not these things that we see around us. The church is you and I. Church hadn't changed. We've changed. We've gone through the marketing paradigm shift. Well, let's just go out and see which demographic we'd like to go after. Let's see what people like. Oh, you like a guitar and a piano and a five-piece band? Oh, we can get that for you. Oh, you like to have lights and flashing sound machines and smoke blowing across the stage? We can get that for you. You like having dancing girls and, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> stay tuned. Everything that we see masquerading under the banner of the church today, no. God has not changed. His church has not changed. It's us that have changed. That bedrock of truth that Peter blurted out so long ago, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that has not changed. And oh, my friends, today I am so proud that the Pinnacle Church of Christ stands solidly on that rock of truth. We are not trying to impress anyone with a fancy building. We're not trying to, to, to impress anyone with some type of trumped-up opportunity to bring the community together for some show at all. No, we stand solidly on the firm truth that Jesus is the Christ. We are living and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ for the whole world to see. The church is not about being something that someone can observe. The church is about being who we have been called to be, being a community of believers, being a body of faith, being the people of God in the midst of difficult times, trying to make a difference for good where you are. The church has not changed. Whether we meet in person as we're doing today, thank God, or whether we're doing it on live stream, the church is still the same. It has not changed. Whether we are taking out bags of sunshine to our brothers and sisters, or whether we're writing cards or notes of encouragement, whether it's a note or a text, whether it's a phone call or a post on Facebook, the church is still the church. We have not changed. We are the church, and God's church hasn't changed in this ever-changing world in which we live in, the question that we need to ask is, what hasn't changed? Well, I'll tell you. God's word hadn't changed. God's message to us not, has not changed since the beginning of time. It remains the same. The Bible doesn't change, my friends. The Bible changes us. If we disagree with something that we read in Scripture, we don't need to have a study on that. We don't need to reinterpret that. We simply need to do what it says. If we disagree with what we read in Scripture, let me tell you, it's not the Bible that needs to change. We need to change. We need to reexamine our opinions and change our views in light of God's unchanging word. The coronavirus doesn't call into question the views of God's trustworthiness, the views of God's faithfulness. His word is sure and firm as much now as it ever has been. Isaiah, the prophet, said over in Isaiah chapter 40, and the verse there is 8, the grass withers, the, 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 the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. The psalmist knew the word of God doesn't change. He said in Psalms 119, in the verse there is 89, Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. God's word doesn't change. Peter knew that. He said in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, We are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. God's word does not change. Now, look, I understand that we are living in some different times. 
Challenging times, changing times. A lot has changed as we look across the width and breadth of our our nation. But, oh, my friends, let me remind you what hasn't changed. We still need to be busy as Christians. And we still need to make sure that we are marching to the tune of a different drummer, that we are being led down this life's highway by the word of God. Now, let me tell you. We've got troubles in this land. We've got a a pandemic to deal with. But the pandemic isn't the biggest threat that we are facing. There's a far greater danger that we need to be aware of, and that is apathy among Christians. That is uh, this idea that uh, we can just kind of meander along and it's not going to make much of a difference what we do. The far greater danger is complacency and apathy among the people of God. Church can only be changed from within when we stray from the scriptures and the commandments and the teaching of Almighty God. And if we're not careful, we can fall into that lull of meandering along life's journey. And before we know it, we have strayed away. That's why the Hebrew writer said, Therefore, we ought give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. But then he turns around and he reminds the people of his day and down the tunnel of time, he's reminding us, God hasn't changed. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, we live in times of great change, but what hasn't changed is the opportunity that God gives to each of us while there is breath in our body to make our choice to be added to the body of Christ Be faithful unto him until death's call for us. And if we are faithful unto death, God's word promises that heaven will be our home. How do we do that? Well, God has a plan of salvation that hadn't changed a bit. God's plan of salvation is a simple plan that you can read about in your Bible. It requires every man, every woman, boy or girl, to hear the truth of the gospel, just as you've heard it today, to believe it with all of your heart. Come repenting of your sins. Confess Jesus Christ as Lord of your life. Be buried with him in the waters of baptism for the remission of sin. Acts 2, verse 38. If you will do those things and be faithful unto death, heaven will be your home. If you are a Christian today, but you know that you've strayed from the teachings and precepts of God's word, God's plan requires that you repent. The prayers of the church will be offered on your behalf. You can be restored to a right relationship with him. If you're subject to the Savior's invitation in any way, we invite you to come today as we together stand and sing. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and feed us, For we need your strength from day to day. There's no other we can turn to Who can help us face another day. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us. For we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us. For we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and feed us. For we need your strength from day to day. There's no other we can turn to Who can help us face another day. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us. For we need you to help us find our way. Thank you, John. Brother A.J. Gilbert, we'll say our closing prayer, and then we'll have one more song.
Let the church say amen to that very impactful message by Brother Phillips this morning. We appreciate those words of, uh, from the scriptures this morning. Let's uh, talk to God and bow our heads for just a minute. Father, we stretch forth our hands unto thee, for there is no other help that we know. From everlasting to everlasting that we know that thou art God, and you are God all by yourself. Father, it's in him that we move and have our very well-being. We thank you so much for this great day you blessed us to see, to come together and worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we know of the families this size. We have some that are hurting, that are sick at home. We ask that you would comfort them as only you can. And Father, we ask that you would create within us clean hearts and renew within us the right spirit and hide your word in us so we won't sin against you. Father, you have our attention with this pandemic, the fires over in California, Father, it's turbulent times, and you're there to help us. And Father, we pray that you continue to comfort us and be the people that we should be so we can grow closer to you. And Father, we pray that in the end that you will save us. We ask that you would give us rest, relief, and reassurance in the shadow of your presence. It's in the precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Aren't you glad you were here today? home too. We're glad you were here and hope you're inspired and leave here as a better Christian. Thank you, John, for a wonderful lesson today. Thanks for being here. Let's sing this last song and we'll be dismissed. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my voice. I lift up my voice to the Lord, singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. I love you. In moments like these, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like these, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to the Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord, I love you. Have a great day. God bless you.